lift goes into action. A load of blocks is needed up above on the building site. Once in close to the walls, it'll raise them quickly and plonk them down on the second story. It's jointed everywhere, a masterpiece of design, yet despite all these contortions, it can't get close enough. Hovering dangerously, the load is stranded. Time may be to bring in a crane. Or perhaps call upon the smooth assistance of this entirely new British machine called, intriguingly, Giraffe. It's designed to be ultra-manoeuvrable. Building sites are full of awkward corners. And with four-wheel drive, this rugged vehicle will go anywhere within reason. To help, its brakes are sealed in the hub. They function in any conditions. It even keeps its load secure and level over bumpy terrain, simply by hydraulically tilting its forks. There's wide vision and it's tough enough to carry loads up to two tons. But it's only when it stops, yards short of where it should deposit its load, that its main design feature is revealed. <laughs> Giraffe is a hybrid, sort of forklift, sort of crane. Standing well back from any obstruction, it extends its neck, rather like the giraffe from which it stole its name. For final adjustments, it slides its head sideways. Graceful movements, reminiscent of that long-necked animal, replace the awkward contortions of its predecessors. Mechanical elegance. A machine inspired by nature, but unfortunately without the stability of a giraffe in the wilds. This giraffe would topple onto its nose if an overloaded boom were extended too far. As a warning, a dial in the cab is the driver's danger signal. Actually, it's measuring how much a metal bar at the back between cab and back axle is bending, how much the cab is rising. Danger. Immediately the lever locks into neutral. Despite every effort, the boom cannot be extended further. There's no option but to withdraw it. And danger is averted. A safe, versatile vehicle that moves quickly between jobs was the designer's aim. A long-necked hybrid workhorse is the result. In the English countryside, this man is trying out a new method for protecting his livestock. The problem, a disease called liver fluke. The disease carriers, snails which live in swampy ground like this. And the cure, a new powder, a powder that's made of glass. And it's glass which comes from a completely different world, the world of electronics. It's a world where glass carries messages, calculates and displays results. A world where glass is rapidly replacing wire. A modern electronics company, like this one near London, spends a lot of time developing new and better types of glass. Using methods which haven't changed much for centuries, they produce glasses which are completely new. Instantly cooled like this, it doesn't always look like glass, but glass it is and before it can be used, they need to determine all its properties.
tests like this are designed to establish the glass's solubility in water. Transistors or fibers which slowly dissolved if they got wet wouldn't be too much use. And some glasses really do dissolve. Here they became such experts in the solubility of glass that they wondered if there wasn't some other way they could use their knowledge. Dissolving glass was surely useful for something. It was a lateral shift which led them to develop glasses which would dissolve at a predetermined rate in a week, a month, a year. Almost by accident, they had arrived at what many scientists had been hunting for, an ideal slow-release pill. A pill which could carry a range of different chemicals and release them gradually as the glass dissolved. Of course, the basic idea isn't new. Just like a lollipop, the pills could have different flavors, each with a different function. And just like a lollipop, the flavor would last right to the very last suck, leaving nothing behind. Any flavor, any shape, they produced a range of glasses, each with a different potential use. Indeed, the potential was so great, the difficulty was to know where to start. The glass could be used for fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides or medicines. But with one of these glass rods cut up into sections to make a mini pill, they started here. At an animal research station where they're looking for new ways to correct mineral deficiencies in cattle. A pill, unlike an injection, could supply a small, steady dose of the missing mineral. This stunted calf, for instance, is suffering from a lack of the trace element, copper. The symptoms are the pale tinge to the ears, the wasted muscles, the spectacles round the eyes. But now, a copper deficiency like that can be corrected by the injection of a slowly dissolving glass pill, a pill doped with copper. As the glass dissolves over the months, the copper will be released into the bloodstream. And that farmer we saw at the beginning, worried about liver fluke, is trying another version of the slow-release glass. Ground into a powder, this glass contains a poison to kill the snails which carry the disease. It only dissolves when the ground is wet and the snails are thriving. So it's there just when it's needed and there's no need to use dangerous persistent chemicals. Elsewhere, the glass could be used against snails carrying the disease Bilharzia, the slow death of the tropics. So, flavored to cure, or flavoured to kill, dissolving glass has proved it does indeed have a use. Mary Freewin has been shopping with her talkative daughter, Joanne. Yet surprisingly, Mary has never heard the true sound of her daughter's voice. Because Mary is deaf. Not completely deaf. But she can't hear the higher notes so important in speech. And many other sounds she doesn't hear at all, like birds singing or jangling keys. Hearing aids don't help. They can't distinguish between sounds of different pitch. They'd simply make the low note she can hear too loud. So since childhood illness affected her hearing, Mary has lived in a strange, bewildering, isolated world. A world where the sounds that others rely on to sense what's happening around them are simply never heard.
Breaking glass, boiling water. They're all outside her range of hearing. Mary, I want you to say yes every time you hear the tone. Right. All right? Yes. At a British university, they're trying to help. Yes. And the first step is to plot out exactly what Mary can and can't hear. The higher the tone, the louder it has to be before Mary can hear it. Yes. And as the notes climb, she stands less and less chance of hearing them at all. I can feel it more than hear it. Very soon, her hearing curve plummets to zero. Its total range only a small fraction of the normal scale. A speech analyzer demonstrates the problem. The frequency pattern of certain sounds lies wholly in the higher range she can't hear at all. But the researchers here are developing a new hearing aid which can reduce these high frequencies. The whole sound pattern can be moved to the left into the lower range which she does hear with the basic shape undistorted. Now if I say S, can you hear anything? Can you do again, please? S. No. Are you sure? Mm. All right. What I'd like you to do now is, is turn round so you can't see me, and I'm yes. going to say S. Right. And when you can hear what I'm saying, you tell me. Yes. Fine. They're trying to find out how loud the reduced or transposed frequencies must be before Mary starts to hear those high notes. I'm going to try another word now. Then they mix the processed sound with the original so that all the components of speech are present. Stay. 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 I've heard that. Yes. yes, quite a few of them. If I say, say... Hall. With the aid switched off, Mary Hall. can't hear words like these at all. Hall. Hall. But with it on, she can recognize words say. she hasn't heard for years. Say. 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 Do you know what a pancake needs? So with the experimental yes. aid now miniaturized, Mary has been trying it out at home. Half a pint of milk. And her awareness of the world around her is transformed. Sugar. It's a much less isolated world when you can hear your husband coming home. Hello, Hello darling. Hi. Hello, Johnny. Hello. What kind of day you had? Oh, all right, there you are. Have you heard any more new sounds? No, the clicking on the hob. Yes. I could hear that clicking. Oh, you, know, you tell me about the gas yes. not being on, and oh, I no, could hear that. No more burnt and, carrots then. And also, I sat at the bar and could hear the water boiling over. So actually, it's marvellous to hear those sounds, you know. Well, for Mary, okay. and for others like and her, water it's a whole the world the rediscovered. I really am that surprised. And the what rain, else do you want? Oh, rain. and I went outside and I heard the rain patting on the pavement, which was lovely, you know. So I suppose you like the rain now. <laughs> If you'd like more information about any of today's items, write to Living Tomorrow, P.O. Box 48, London, SE1, England.